Hello. I am going to walk through a tutorial for making gnome pens. I have had a lot of requests on these, so I have a wait list. If you'd like to be added to the wait list, just send me a message and I'd be happy to do that. Uh, what we'll be making today are this style of gnome pen. So this is the gnome right on the barrel of the pen. I have also made these and it's just a full gnome that you can press the head down. Um, but these take a little bit longer, so I'm not going to make these ones in this tutorial, but I will do another tutorial on how I make these ones. So for now, we're just going to make these. The one thing I really love about these pens is that there's no two that are the same. So here are other ones that I made. This was the very first one that I made. So he's super cute. And then I went on to make these ones. I love them all so much. I hate to get rid of these. I really want to keep them all for myself. Um, but I'm just going to keep making more. <laughs> so maybe that, maybe just seeing them will will um, make me happy, but okay, here are these. Uh, so again, I mean, you can see I've got different beards, I've got different noses, definitely different hats. Get creative, you don't have to make the same thing over and over again, that's one of the reasons I really love working with clay because everything comes out different every time. And, you know, just get creative. Let your creativity kind of just take over. I don't really plan anything ahead of time. I just sort of start building my gnome and let it go from there. Okay, so here are my steps. First thing is I start with my pen. I am using for these ones Inkjoy gel pens. These are by far my favorite to work with only because they have a very straight and even pen barrel. And I really like that. There's no difference for the pen grip. And it's easy enough just to remove the clip and work with the solid piece. So this is my preference. I have made regular pens with other styles and other types of pens, and they're fine. But this is by far my favorite. Hard, getting harder to come by can't really get the the large packs anymore unless I order on Amazon which is usually where I get mine um, but you can get them at Walmart or most uh, stores larger stores will have them okay so this is what I use and what I do to go through the process I'll just do it quick here is remove the top now like this some of these it's like they're trying to see who can tighten it. I just take a cloth and it usually will come off, but I just remove the guts and then separate the, oops, sorry, separate them. I've got a little set up on the side of my desk where I keep everything separate. <clears throat> and then I just remove the clip. I use wire cutters. Most times I don't even have to sand. But occasionally I do. Now I have found lately with the last couple months that I've been buying these pens, I don't know what's different, but this little line here, the seam where the pen barrel mold was, it tends to stick up. So I have been sanding them down, especially when I'm using um, my vinyl pen wraps because I don't want my vinyl to wrinkle. So I'll just sand that down smooth and that was it. That's really all it takes. So that's all really the prep that I do. I don't sand the whole pen. I don't really feel like there's uh, need to and that's about it once the pens are taken apart 
then I will spray paint them. If I'm using glitter, if I'm just doing plain vinyl, I don't do anything to the pen. I don't need to paint it because my vinyl covers the pen. But if I'm using glitter or, uh, well, making my gnomes because I've been using glitter. So when I'm using glitter, then I paint it. I stick to either black or white spray paint just because I don't want to have a million different colors and cans around. And I do have different color acrylic paints, but I find I have to do a couple different coats and it's longer drying time. So these I spray paint and usually within an hour, uh, they're good to work with. Okay. So here is the pen. This is what I start with now for these. I am using air dry clay. There are two different kinds that I've been using. The first one is DOS. DOS clay. Um, I find this is a little bit of a wetter um, medium. And although I do like using it, I have switched to only because I didn't want to keep on peeling this. I need to get a container for it. I just haven't done that. But I found while I was waiting for my DOS to come in, I did order a tub of Crayola air dry clay. And I like this too. So this is what I'm using. Air dry clay. This takes anywhere from 24 to probably 48 hours. Well, 24 to 36 hours to dry, depending on the thickness of your clay, you want it to dry completely. And while you're working with it, it can start to harden. So it'll get like a crust on the top of your clay. So you want to keep working with it. If it's sitting on your desk or table or wherever you're working, that way it doesn't dry out or put it back in your tub and cover it up. So here's what it looks like. Little goes a long way. And then I'm just going to take a clump of it. Really don't need much for these gnomes. I'm just going to take this much for now. And then I'm going to put my top back on. And I'll get this out of the way. So there's really no wrong way to make a gnome, in my opinion, because there's such... Um, creative characters, you know, little beings that I don't think there's a wrong way to do it. So don't worry if you're not creative, you know, just play around with it. See what looks good. That's all that I'm doing. I am by no means a professional. I don't claim to be a professional. Um, and as you can watch me work, you'll understand understand why I am not a professional, <laughs> but I have fun and that's the most important thing. Okay. So here I'm just kind of forming a beard and where I put mine, it's kind of at the start of these bumps underneath where the nib was in the back. And then I'm just pressing it into the pen and then pressing down. And then I'm going to flatten the top a little bit because that's where my nose is going to go. You don't want to make it too thin only because it could crack. I mean, it most likely it's going to crack anyways because it's air dry clay, but you don't want it to crack and just completely crumble on you. So I'll show you how I deal with the cracks when we get to the end and start painting him. Okay, so now I'm just making a nose, and as you saw with the other pens, you can do a circle nose, you can do an oval nose, you could do an oblong nose, go up and down. You can make him any way you want. I feel like the nose is where his character starts for me. The nose attaching it to the beard is where he really starts to come together, and then I can kind of figure out where I want to take him. So I'm just kind of rounding it out so it looks like his nubby little nose. Okay, now what you want to do 
And what you can do before you attach this is kind of rough up the back of your clay and where you're going to attach it. That way it adheres better. This is so small, I'm not worried about it. It adheres pretty well. But if you wanted to do that, you certainly could. And then I have some um, clay tools that I work with. You don't need them. Honestly, if you have stuff around your house, you can find stuff around your house that will work. Uh, you don't need any special tools. In my opinion, working with, you know, this, you can find everyday things that will work for you. You know, you can get a fork, you can get a knife, you can have toothpicks, scissors, you know, whatever it is that you have, make it work for you. You don't need to go out and buy special things. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier, but it's not impossible to work with what you have until you, you know, have the money to do something else. I forgot what I was looking for. Oh, yes. Um, I am looking for a nice circle. Okay, so I'm using this circle end, the circle ball, um, and I'm using it to kind of blend the nose to the beard. And this is just to prevent it from falling off. Okay, now I'm going to give it more defined under the nose when I start to do his beard, but right now I just want everything blended together, and then I'm going to blend the nose to the pen. There we go. Okay. Now the next step is getting the hat. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bit of clay. You really don't need a lot. Again, these pens are itty bitty. So you don't need much. And I'm just going to smush it around a little bit to get some of those creases out of the clay. And then I'm going to start to make the brim of the hat. So I'm just going to roll it back and forth a little bit. Now, again, this is also one part of the hat. If you see here, you can make the brim different. This one almost doesn't have one. And then this one's a little bit thinner and this one's a little bit thicker. So you can really make them as thin or as thick as you want, you can make it stand out or blend in. It's really all your preference. All right, this is good. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my brim, take my pen. I want the seam of the hat in the back. So I'm gonna put it over my nose and then just lay it down. Now, again here, you can bring the hat down further if you want. You can have it up higher if you want. It's really all a matter of how you want him to look. So this little guy, I think I'm gonna make more woodsy, so I'm gonna bring his hat down a little bit. Okay, so now where it comes in, I'm just going to take <clears throat> and chop off the excess clay and then bring the two, <clears throat> two pieces of his hat together. I'm just gonna kind of smush them to join them and then I'm gonna fix where his hat was. And I think that looks pretty good. So with this, you just have, I mean, you could take your finger, you can take a paintbrush, 
I like these little silicone ends because then you can kind of brush over to blend it all together. And then you can reform the brim of the hat. Okay, now I don't worry about going so smooth. I like my gnomes looking a little worn out-ish. So we'll play around with that when it comes to um, designing him a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna go back to my circle tool and I'm gonna attach the brim of the hat inside and I'm just gonna go all around to attach it to the pen And I'm really just doing this, that way when I go to add the rest of his hat, it's got a better adhesion. To the brim of the hat. Okay. There you go, that's it. And now you can design your hat. So again, this is one other place where it can be anything that you want. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take some clay and mash it back up to make sure it's nice and damp. And then I'm just going to take a little bit at a time, flatten it a little bit, and then just put it in. to the middle. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flatten it and get as close to the outside or the inside of the brim as possible. I'm trying to make sure I stay in camera for you guys. And now I'll do the front of him. Okay, and there you go. So now you can make him however you want, design him however you want. I am gonna go in the inside of the pen just to make sure the clay is all pushed out. I don't want it to dry inside the pen because when it fully dries, I don't want it to crack whatever clay is on top of the pen. So I just want to make sure that that's cleaned up. Very good. Okay. All right. Now back to the ball of my little tool here. And I'm again going to use that to blend and join the hat. and the brim of the hat. Now here you can see there's not much of a brim left, but you can take any tool that you have and just kind of press it in to bring your make your brim more pronounced. There you go.
Alright. All right, that looks good. Now I'll go around. And again, whatever tool you have, you could probably use a Q-tip. There we go. All right. I think that's pretty cute. Okay. So this is now where I'm going to touch up his beard. And you can make any type of beard. You can have it come down in a little loop. You can have it just be pretty straight. This one I made to look like beard and mustache. And then this one I actually made little lines and made his little beard. So however you want to do it. So I use this little raking tool that I have, and I'm just going to kind of come down and drag it down to scruff up his beard. Again, there's really no right or wrong way to do this because he's your creation. So I'm going to go in a little bit just to define the nose and keep it separate. There we go. Okay, so you can always come here and move this out if you want it to look more like a mustache. You can flatten it down. And then you can always go back in when the clay's not completely dry but a little bit more firm. That way you can go through to make sure you get more definition. If you'd like, you can just push it down. It's whatever you want. There you go. So there's this little guy. I'm going to come around here, I think, add a little texture to his hat. There we go. So this is the first step. Now, once you're done and you have him decorated the way that you want, then you can go in and, or set him up and let him dry. So I'm going to let this guy dry for, like I said, at least 24, maybe 36 hours. I'll check him after 24 and see if he needs anything more. And then you can start the next process. So I did start some so I can show you. And I'm going to show you one that has some cracks. So this is what it, one looks like. It's a different one that I did yesterday. Now when he dried, air dry clay does tend to crack a little bit. It's okay. This is on here. He's not ruined. He's not going to fall apart. What I am going to do is go in and I have my X-Acto tool and I'm just going to kind of scrape over a little bit and it just kind of fills in the hole a little bit with the clay. I don't mind it so much because 
like I said, it adds a little character to him. But you can always fill it in if you want to go back. And fill them in with some more clay and then just let that clay redry. It's not going to hurt anything. These you barely even see. And I did have on one of my gnomes part of his beard actually broke off, but a little bit of glue and he's good to go. That one's a little bit bigger. He's good. This little piece is a little bit bigger, but it's fine. You won't even notice it when I start to color him and cover him up. Everything will seal fine. It's not going to break on you, like I said. Uh, none of mine have. And they've all made it through shipping, so these little guys are here to stand the test of time. Alright, so I don't need this right now. I'm going to put this away. And then I'll show you how I finish them up and paint them. Now, you can use acrylic paint if you want. You can use um, any type of uh, paint that you would like to, to paint these. I, again, don't want to have a bunch of different paint colors. I have some, but I actually prefer to put the color in with my UV resin just because then it's getting an even greater seal. So that's what I'm going to do with this guy. Now I have currently a bunch of different colors. I use alcohol ink and paint to mix in, and it's usually just white paint or black paint um, that I'm mixing into my resin, and that just gets me a base solid color. That way it's not you know, see through and clear. And then I add the whatever color that I'm, I'm using for him. So I'm going to do his nose to show you what I mean. Let me see if I can find his nose. Okay. So I have a brown that all I did was put a few drops of brown in a cup with some resin. Now you want to make sure you have more resin, your ratio of resin to alcohol ink is not too great. Otherwise you are not going to be able to seal it. Let me find my brush. Sorry, I should have got my brush out before. Okay, so I'm just going to take a brush, and first I'm going to mix this up. And then I grab a baby wipe. Okay, and now we'll paint his nose. You don't need a lot. His nose is pretty little. Now 
and you can make it whatever color you want. I have some where I did more of a tan. I have some where I've done more brown. So it's your preference, whatever you'd like. I usually do two coats of color just to make sure it's on there. Okay, so once the color is on his nose, you can seal every color separately if you like. I'm going to do his nose and work on his beard. And again, the beard, you can make any color that you want. I do have a, do I want black or white? No, I'll do white. Um, I actually get rid of my white, so I need a new one. Okay, so here's what I do for making the color. I am just going to take a little bit of acrylic white paint. I'm going to put it in the bottom of my cup, and I'm just going to use two drops. You really do not need a lot. And then I'm going to take my resin. I love Decor Room. This is what I'm using. This is the only stuff I use. And then I'm just going to put some in. Now I've been using this for a while, so I can kind of eyeball it. And really, you just want to make sure you have enough resin to balance out the color. That way it still cures. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now I have my white. I'm not doing any other color in here. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm going to paint my beard. Now I'm painting white on this white beard because I'm sealing it, in case you were wondering. It also, I will probably add another color bits in there, like maybe a brown or a black to give his beard some definition. And having a white base just makes it a little easier. That way I don't get too much of the other color on there. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cure him. Now, let me see if I can squeeze you over here. So I have my light and I'm just going to set him under the light and let him cure for a minute. Now I've had luck. I know everybody has different experiences with different lights and different resins, but I've had a lot of luck with this decor room and the lamp that I have is an LED UV light and it, the, when I make pens, the, each layer cures in two minutes. So I usually will do a three minute for the final layer just to make sure, but I've never had any issues with tackiness or anything like that. Oh, sorry. Hit you guys again. Okay. So he is coming along pretty cute. I'm going to do another layer on his nose and another layer on his beard. And also with this, you know, just play around with the colors. You can layer and get different colors. Again, no right or wrong way to make your Nomi. 
Okay, where did I put my brown? There it is. Okay. Now, before I cure him again, I think I might add a tiny, tiny bit of black in his beard. And this is really just to give his beard a little bit more definition, these little lines. I just don't want it to be all white. That's all. There we go. So, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's just a tiny bit of definition around his beard. And that is good enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and cure him. Let him sit there for a minute. And I'm going to think about what color I want to make him, or make his hat. So, maybe I'll do a red. Yeah, I think I'll do a red, and maybe we'll do a glittery white for his brim. And the alcohol inks that I'm using, if you're curious, they're just Let's Resin brand. It's this. I got it off of Amazon. I absolutely love it. They've got a lot of, tons of colors. And these last me quite a while. Okay. See, no tackiness, no stickiness. Okay. Now let's go to his hat. I'm going to add a little bit more resin to this. Isn't that a pretty color? I think it looks orange in my camera. But it's actually a very beautiful red. Okay. Let's go ahead and paint him. And this is where if you do any designs in the hat, they really shine through. When you go to seal it. It's beautiful. And this one I just did little swirls. Okay. 
Now, I don't really know how to edit videos very well, so all that fast forwarding, that would probably be beneficial at this point. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. So you guys get to just sit here and watch me. <laughs> you can fast forward to get through to the next good part. Because I'm just going to do two layers of this hat. And I think for this one I'm going to wait to do the sparkly brim just because I don't want it to get into my red. I really want that red to come out. All right, let me cure this. Now, if you're really bothered by the cracks, like I said, you can fill them in. You can use a glue to fill them in if you'd like, and then, or more clay to fill them in, and then you can paint over it. They don't bother me because I like adding, it just makes it look, you know, more unique. So here's after one layer, we're going to add another layer, that's perfect, um, here we go, and between it being you know, hardened on here and sealing it with your resin. This little guy's not going anywhere. And you can even mix colors. Like if you want to come in after you do one and put a different color over it. Go for it. Okay. I'm going to let him cure. Now, I don't know if I put white in here or not. No, it's just glitter. All right, so I'm going to need a little bit of white with the glitter. Oops, 
Sorry, I'm just grabbing my cups. Okay. Alright, so in here I just have glitter. I had put just a regular white glitter earlier. And I have a little bit of resin. So I'm going to take some of this. Isn't that pretty? And I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to mix it with some white paint. And for this, I really just want like half a drop. That's it. Like I said, with the paints, I really just use enough to color my resin. If I get it, oh, that's pretty. Very, very pretty. All right, I'm going to add a little bit more of the glitter. paint the outside of this. And I think the reason he cracked so much, my other ones didn't crack quite as much as he did, or it's not as deep, is because I really, I think his hat's a little too thin here. You want it a little bit thicker, and then it won't crack as much, just because air dry, I don't know what it is about it, but it tends to crack if it's too thin. It needs some substance, which is what I've done with my other ones. So they're much thicker on the back, and they didn't crack. So I'll make sure my other ones are all filled in much better. Okay. Very pretty. You guys see that? I don't think you can see the shimmer. It's super pretty though. All right, and then you can get him sealed. And that's it. So now once he's done and completely sealed, then I will make my pen as I normally would. So I just put UV resin down pick whatever glitter I'm going to use and add the glitter and then I will seal the entire pen including my gnome again with just regular clear glitter or regular clear resin and then I will let him completely cure once the rest of the pen is done so and then you'll get one of these little guys so that's all that I do 
If you have any questions, let me know. I'm, like I said, I'm not a pro by any means, but I love making these little guys and I think it's a lot of fun. You have a lot of creativity with it. There's no right or wrong way to make them. Do whatever you're comfortable with and just have fun. And if you want to, you can name all of them when you're done. Like this guy, Seamus. This one is Chris because he looks like Christmas. This little guy's Beardsley. I don't know why. I just really like the name Beardsley. And then this is Chaco. My son picked out his colors. So he's Chaco because he looks like chocolate. And I don't know his name yet. I'll know it once I finish him. But there you go. So now he is cured enough for me to do the rest of the pen. I will pick out the glitter. I will finish him up and go on to the next one. So again, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I will do my best to answer them as best that I can. Or if there are more talented and gifted people <laughs> watching this, then please feel free to chime in and answer any questions that you might know as well. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.